Hey guys, so welcome back. Today on the bench we have got an RCA tube radio. This is an AM radio as you can see and this is from 1951. It is a model 1X51. This is uh, this is 72 years old. It came in various colors. I've got some information here from the RCA service data. It was available in this color here which it says is maroon. It also came in a tan, ivory, blue, white, green, and red. So the numbers go from 1X51 through 1X57. So if you've got any of those models, this is what it's going to look like inside if you were to open one up. Not that I suggest you do. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's take a look at what this thing has. It has, uh, I bought it at an auction for $2. So you bring this around back. It's a Bakelite cabinet. This has a little bit of a chip missing here. Everything else looks pretty good. There's our model information. Tag looks pretty bad. 1X51. Okay. It's got the golden throat certificate. And the cord is cut off. That's always a good start, right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, open this. Well, it wants to open up already. These are clips are so not holding it real good. The antenna, you can see we've had some work done on the power cord here. And uh, well, now we got to look inside. <laughs> you can see if I not rip this antenna off. It does not have that I see a, a plug for disconnection. Anyway, so we got kind of a dirty mess in here. I'll let you get in here and you can see it. got its tubes. That's always nice to see. Speaker, I don't see any holes in the speaker just yet. And we will see what we get. Let me let me uh, get this out of the cabinet. It looks like what I need to do is pull this uh, volume knob off the side here. And uh, there it comes right off. And uh, let me get this thing out of the cabinet. I've got a few screws to remove and we'll take a look at what we have. You don't need this power cord. It's crumbling anyway. This uh, chassis of RC 1104C, if you look in the uh, in the service notes, you'll see that there's two different schematics. Let me back you up. So there's here's the different chassis numbers that are represented by this, and this chassis number on the second page uh, does not appear here. We have 1104C. Uh, you got to go to the next page, and this is for 1104C here. And I think that we'll find that the, the tubes line up more with that anyway. So anyway, this is a schematic we'll be using. So it's a uh, it's an All-American 5 with a converter, single IF, two transformers, 12 AV6 with a detector uh, AVC first audio, 50 C5 output, and then a 35W4 rectifier. And it's got a dial lamp. Cool. Here is... Before long, we'll be talking about where it is. So here it is. Here's indicates chassis ground versus basically a floating ground. And that guy there will need to be replaced with a Y2 capacitor. Don't see a cross the line cap here. We'll get into that later. Uh, let me see if we can figure out how to get this thing out of the case. So I'm trying to figure out how to get the chassis out best way. I can see a set of screws uh, that hold this plate in. And that's these Phillips head screws that are located in some of the corners. I'm not sure if that's really where I need to take it out from. Uh, it looks like this has a subplate here. And the tuning condenser is attached to it. The speaker is, appears to be attached to it. And I'm thinking maybe that's what's supposed to come out and that this is basically the back of the, the face of the unit, but I don't honestly know. Um, it's got an interesting feature back in here for reflecting light. So I don't know if that's where that comes out or not. 
But anyway, um, I'm going to try doing some experimentation. One of the things I noticed is it looks like this nut right here is only on part way. It looks like it went on and got you know jammed or something. I may try to take that one off first anyway to see what we have. Yeah, I think that was jammed. Let me have to chase that thread a little bit. See if it gives me an idea what's happening. Yeah, let me try to take those out first and we'll just see what we get. Okay, I think that might have it. Back to you up. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. That's different. Check this out. We got like a clear lens here in the front. That's nice. It looks like the RCA tag will be easier to remember. I mean, uh, remove. It's got little uh, push nuts on it. I'll be able to get that off. Nice. This might clean up nicely. Okay, let's see what we got on the other side of this, huh? Well, the speaker looks okay. I think it's got no, it's got some kind of push in right here. We have to be careful with that. It looks like it's just been kind of pushed in right here. I might need to push that back out and then maybe do a coating on the speaker to protect it. Okay, interesting. I wonder where the light shines in. Okay, the light is here. So I guess it shines from behind the knob. Okay, that's pretty cool. Alright, let's see what we got on the other side here. Alright, so we've got like a subplate. The speaker is attached to. It has short leads that comes off from over here, coming right from the audio output transformer. This power leads in, the speaker lead obviously from the, no, 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 antenna lead coming off of the tuning condenser. So let's see, do you look underneath the chassis? Oh, it looks like we're missing a tube shield. Looks like, looks like we're missing a tube shield right here. Let's see what we can do about that. Okay, well, let's see. Actually, it looks like it's attached to the chassis there. Okay, they're both attached. Okay, so all I needed to do is undo these two. The other two will stay with the sub-chassis. Okay, let's get the sub-chassis off. Looks like all we lack is a couple screws over here. Okay, so now we can see in there where the knob has its spring clip. So we can find the. Of course, it's not pointing at us. Let's see if we can get in there and spread it. Jim Burns mentioned on the recent video this is how you release these. I, I did know that, but uh, on that particular model, I couldn't, I couldn't get a, a driver in there. There was not a place for it. Well, I don't know if I can get in there. Okay. Knob is off. Huh. Interesting. Like it had a pink color. That's interesting. Okay. Now... This should lift up. I think. Bring the speaker with it. And yes, we're free. This probably could have stayed. This probably could have stayed with the radio. Okay, this probably could have stayed inside the case, but I'm glad I took it out because I want to clean up the inside. So I think this is the right way to do it. 
Okay, let's get this out of the way until we can clean it up. Might repaint this. We'll see. All right. The rest of the speaker looks pretty good. It's got a couple of these little places here. You didn't see it there, 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 and over here, the one we saw earlier. I'll have to look at that, but uh, we'll reinforce this so it doesn't lose itself. Okay, let's see what we have here. Has anybody else been in here? I'm going to call it no. <laughs> I don't see anything that's been changed. This all looks original to me. Um, usually if you get this changed out right here, you'll see some electrical tape on something somewhere. So it looks original to me. Okay, the power cord comes in here. We'll obviously need to do something about that. And uh, let me get this uh, cap out of the way so we can see what we have there. Okay, it's a two section, 50 by 30 at 150. It's one of those deep boxy chassis that are kind of a pain in the neck to work on, you know. Pretty simple. Okay, let me uh, find my way into where the power cord comes in and we'll see about firing this thing up. And bring it up slow on the uh, Variac and through an isolation transformer and we'll monitor the current and we'll see what we get. Okay, the power cord comes in and goes to the switch. This is all going to be changed anyway. It goes to the switch and it goes to the rectifier in four, which is way down there. Let's see. That cable is this one. Now let's see. I can come in here and I can get in there and cut that power cable connection coming in. Okay, I cut the power cable out of the way. All right, power cable is out. So let's see. I need to get down to pin four. Put it right here. Boy, I tell you, they got this thing packed in here where it is difficult to work on. There we go. That'll give me some room. Okay, pin four is there, and the other cable goes to the light. Okay. There's the remnants of the power cable out. All right, let's look at putting some power to this and see what we get. Okay, I'm going, ready to go for first power up. Y'all don't do this at home. I've got a lot of special equipment here that uh, tech benches use. Uh, so if you're not familiar with this, don't take an old radio like this and plug it in. Uh, you got old capacitors in here. Bad things can happen. You can damage the components, if not something else, including yourself. So uh, I don't recommend you do this yourself, but you can find out information about this on your own. But anyway, just so you know, I have, a, I have an isolation transformer back here. I have a dim bulb up above it that's in the circuit. You can't see it. Over here, the red box is a variac that I can use to bring the voltage up slowly. You'll see the voltage going in on this. That's 120 volts right here. This is an AC ammeter where we can track the amount of current going in. It's one amp full scale. I think we should be expecting it to be around 0.3, somewhere in here. This is mainly so I can see if the current's running away from me, so I can keep the, volume, the, uh, the voltage down low. I've also got a panel over here with a one amp fuse in it, but with all the dim bulb and everything, it's very unlikely that'll ever happen. Okay, it is on. And we're going to start off low. You'll see the voltage come up here. Uh, here we go. Here's 40 volts. 50 volts. You see, I'm watching the amperage here. I don't see anything yet. Sixty volts. Don't see anything. So it might not have continuity through the uh, filaments. So I'll try that in just a minute. 
70 volts. Yeah, I'm still not getting anything. Let me uh, move some filaments around and see if we can get some activity here. Okay. Okay, I'm not seeing any activity yet, so I probably don't have continuity through my filament string. And um, I think it will still work with the dial lamp burned out, but I may replace it anyway. You see, if I'm getting any voltage inside, getting voltage to the unit, like through my panel. I'm getting 76 volts, 73 volts to the radio, so that looks good. All right, so I'm going to have to start checking my filament string here. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of watching the, the current meter to see if I can see the connection of the series string filaments. Okay, I'm going to assume I have a filament out somewhere. Let me, uh, let me turn down the voltage and we'll see if we can find which one's got an open filament. I'll bring it back. Okay, so I went in there and tested. I was having uh, no continuity from three to four of the rectifier. So I've pulled the rectifier tube out and I've cleaned the pins. But going from three through to ground, I have continuity. So the rest of the series string is okay. Now I'm just waiting to check to see if this is going to work here. I just had to clean the contacts on it. All right, let's see. Three and four. Yeah, I'm not getting any continuity. Let's check my meter. Okay, I'm on the same post. Yeah, the filament's burned out. So probably somebody plugged this thing in, turned it on, the capacitor is at a short, and it popped the rectifier. That's probably what happened. So let me get a new rectifier. I've got a stash of them. Checking to make sure, yes, it is a 35W4. And uh, get back to, uh, can you focus on that? 35W4. And we'll get back onto this. I need to go hunting for a 35W4. Got a little silver tone here. It says it's got a 35W4 in it, so let's open this thing up and see if it's still in here and if it's any good. I'm showing you this because I may do this radio one day and I like to show the first look. Delco 35W4. Uh, let's see if this is any good. But I see a tube shield. Let's steal that too for now. You can see the detector tube back there, I guess. It's really gassy. Can you see it back there? It's all white on the top. Yeah, and the cone's got tears in it. Pick. Eh, we may work on this one someday, but not today. Okay, so we got a tube shield. That's good. Let me check this and see if this one's any good. Okay, yeah, so this uh, rectifier from that silver tone is good. So let me put this thing in. That'll complete our series string circuit. And uh, let me also change that light bulb out. I've got another number 47 here, so I'll switch that out as well.
Okay. Let's get the power pack hooked up to this and we'll see how we do again. Try it again. Bear with me. Okay, let's try again. I got the power hooked up. And uh, once again, we're going to be watching the amps here. Voltage here. We've got to turn it all the way down. We should have continuity through the string now. So let's go. 10 volts, 20 volts. Make sure that's on. Yep. I expect we're going to hear a hum badly before we get to 110. 30. 40. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of doing this to make sure that the audio output transformer is good. Because if it's not, then that's a big job. It's 50 volts. Uh, we're getting current draw here now. We're up about 0.1 amps. That's good. 60 volts, 70, 80, should be starting to maybe see some glow soon. Yeah, I'm starting to see some glow. Ninety volts. It's usually enough to hear something out of these things. Let's let it warm up. I'm watching the current. Current's starting to come up. There it goes. Conduction just started. 0.4 amps. That's quite a bit. I'm going to drop the voltage a little bit. Yeah, that's more than I think we should be getting. Okay, it's quiet. I'm going to uh, shut it down. We should have heard something there. So I'm going to go ahead and check the audio output transformer and see if it's bad. With a blown rectifier it might be. Uh, and then probably this capacitor will have to go next. So let me, let me get ready to check that audio output transformer. Okay, so I'm checking between uh, pins 7 and 6 on the audio output uh, tube. And that's indicating 1,500 1, ohms. So I think the uh, primary of the audio output's okay. I think I hear a little bit of scratching on this, so that's that's a good sign. Okay, so I'm gonna get the signal tracer out and see if we've got anything going to the uh, audio section. Okay, I've got the little signal tracer hooked up uh, on the coupling cap line that goes from the uh, detector over to the audio output. I've got it on the on the detector side of the coupling cap and just see if we get any audio coming to that point. Uh, I think the output transformer is okay. I think we're getting uh, stuff through the circuit, the uh, filament string. We got some power draw, although it was high. So just see if we're getting anything here. Okay, there's 60 volts. You saw this come up because of that old capacitor. It's trying to reform, I guess. 70 volts. 80 volts, 90 volts. We'll see it start to conduct here in a minute. Watch this current go up. Got my hand on the power switch here. See the voltage dropping a little bit. Here it comes. Conduction starting. Power dropped. Okay, that's really high power drain. I think that capacitor is just leaking so bad. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm getting glow on the dim bulb. Let me, uh, let me shut this down, and I'm gonna do something about that capacitor. Okay, I thought I'd show you something about the capacitor wizard. And what this thing does is it tests. Uh, ESR on uh, capacitors, and you do it in circuit because it uses high frequency, uh, very low voltage. So you can't tell if something's leaking at voltage. But uh, one of the things about this is that it'll show ESR, but it won't tell you if you have a short or not. So let me go in here and test the two sections of this capacitor and show you what you get. So 
if I go to, I know that this is the black lead here, right? Okay, you can't see that. Hang on. It's right up here. So, it works. Now, if I go to the red lead, red lead comes here. And you see it moves a little bit. See it? It's going about 30 ohms. So, it's basically open. That's going to cause a lot of humming. But it will allow the radio to work. Now let's test, let's check the other circuit, the green. The green comes over here. Oh, good, right? Well, that first mark you see, it's, let's see, it's about, reading about 0.2 ohms. Now, if that's getting an alternating current, that's great. That's like a, that's like a new capacitor. It's not a new capacitor. It's 72 years old. So let's check it with a DC, uh, meter and see what kind of resistance it has. Okay, it works. If I go to the black lead here, and then I go back to the red lead, five, six mega ohms. Shouldn't be getting anything. But let's check the other one, the green one. So now I'll go to the green one here and here. You see that? 0 0.4, 0 0.3 ohms. It's about what you get these meter leads touching each other. Let me zero it. Okay, now I'll go back. So the green section is short, is shorted out. So it's gone like the red one where it went really high resistance where it's not going to do any filtering to just going flat out short. And this was what was shorting out the power supply and not allowing anything to get through the radio. It was why we were getting the high current. And this is why you don't want to just plug these things in. This was a dead short. Okay, let me get that capacitor cut out of there. I may just do the green section and we'll see how that works. I'll bring it back. Okay, so I've got the green lead cut off of this capacitor. I've got another 30 microfarad at 250 here in its place, just tacked in. All right, and I've got power going in here and here. Let's see. That's correct. Okay, now let's see what we get. We'll watch the current again. Way down. It's 30 volts, 40 volts, 50 volts, 60 volts, 70 volts, 80 volts, 85. We'll be watching the current when the conduction starts. Ninety volts. Come on, conduction. I hear noise. We have noise. It didn't really go to very high because uh, we, we got the short out of there. 100 volts. We're just under 0.2 amps. 110 volts. 0.2 amps. We have hum. That's from the, the red capacitor. It's still in there. So the audio circuit's working. Now I don't have an antenna hooked up. So I don't have an antenna hooked up. Let me see about hooking up something to that. But we got noise. We got hum out of here. 
Uh, let me go ahead and just cut this out and put the other one in so we don't have to worry about that hum. I'll be bringing it right back and put the 50 in. Okay, so I've got the capacitor completely out. I've got a 47 microfarad at 250 standing in for the uh, red lead off of here, and I got the uh, 30 right here. And they're tied into the leads that used to go to the cap. Power's hooked up. You can see the meters. I've also hooked up the antenna back here. So we'll see if we can hear anything. Uh, I may need some of these to help me out. Okay, let's go. Voltage down a little bit. Up. Oh, saw that big spike here. And then we go on in. We know we're up higher, so let's go to 110 volts. And we wait for the tubes to warm up. Look in here. We'll go ahead and take it to 115. Here we go. So we have sound. Then the, the uh, tuning capacitor is hard to turn. and now the money simply flows in wherever she goes. Money in position, pull. Let's see, where are we on the dial? Chip apparently won. Well, you have to keep the government open. I mean, it's... Start playing better. shredded, marinated, all-white meat chicken. Choose from three dipping sauces. Spicy ranch, nacho cheese sauce, and house-made guacamole. Order on the Taco Bell app. Get one dip per two pack, two dips per four pack, at participating Taco Bell stores for a limited time only, while supplies last. Wex back here with you to talk about UVC Power Sports tractors and outdoors. I decided to slide. Well, guys, I think it sounds great. Um, I think that we've done the repair, all right? So... What I'm going to do now is do a bit of a restoration. We're going to clean this thing up. I'm going to change out the paper wax paper caps. This is the death capacitor. That one's going to be changed out um, with a Y2 capacitor here. And uh, the, the coupling cap for the audio output is located down there. It's that sprague that you see laying sideways. He's got to go right away. So uh, I'm going to go in tear out the uh, paper caps and get this thing put back together again and I'll look at mounting these two guys and I'll bring you back when I get all that work done. So hang on and then we'll look at how it sounds, maybe touch the alignment. Okay, I've cleaned about half of the, cat, uh, the chassis here on this top here. Uh, it's an interesting mix of tubes. We've got, a, we've got an RCA here, but then we've got a Raytheon. We had a, uh, what is it, a Sylvania. We had uh, a Micro I never heard of before. Anyway, so it's, people have been in here changing tubes, of course. They just hadn't had the chassis off. All right, so I'm getting to work on this and cleaning it, and I've decided the best thing to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take off the uh, tuning condenser. Uh, I think the grommets probably need to be replaced. Uh, I have some replacement grommets for that, so I'll be able to do that. I'm going to get the speaker off. Now, the speaker uh, is in need of coating. There's areas where it hasn't been damaged yet, but uh, I can see areas where I'm starting to be able to see light through the, through the cone. And certainly, see it right in here along that crease. You can see a little bit of light from the meter behind it in certain, sometimes. Let's see if I can show it this way. There you go. So it's really thin in some areas that it's hard to see 
so I'm going to take the speaker off and I'm going to try to clean it carefully and then I'm going to coat this thing uh, to keep it from getting damaged because it's it's about there All right I'm going to take all this apart Missing one connection right here. Okay. We'll get this taken care of. And it should be just fine. It's pretty tight. I'll see if I can get this cleaned up and uh, lubricate it some. Okay, I'm going to be changing these grommets as well that are on here. So I noticed that the uh, the tuning knob was sitting crooked on the face plate, uh, and now we can kind of see why. The uh, grommets, particularly this one here is uh, all dried out so it's not holding the the tuning condenser straight so we'll straighten that out by putting the new ones in what I'll do is take these off and then we'll look at getting this uh, tuning condenser cleaned up and see if we can't get it to move a little bit smoother all right got that off good and get this cleaned up some huh Definitely needs some work. There's the ball bearings. You sometimes hear me talk about. Good to get this cleaned up. See how it's pretty opaque. It scratches here from the knob. I'm not gonna be able to do anything about that, I don't think. But maybe it doesn't show too much. This little trim ring has got two little bent over tabs. I might be able to get that out. So I can clean off really well underneath it. And when I get this logo off as well. Okay, after a lot of fighting, got the uh, logo off. It's, uh, it's cast zinc or pop metal, whatever. These, these things are a pain to get off, but finally got them off. Anyway, I'm going to get this all cleaned up. Got the uh, ring off it here. And uh, I'll try to protect this somewhat, but uh, I'm going to wash this all up. So anyway, we'll get this all cleaned up. Okay, I've uh, gone most of the way of doing the replacement of the capacitors that are in here. I've also had to replace uh, two or three resistors that were out of out of spec, and I've actually got one more to do down here in the bottom. Uh, where I'm at right now is, is um, first of all, this is one of those deep type chassis. I mean, it's, it's that far in my finger in deep, and it's pretty tight. So what I mean by all that is that some places... It's not too bad going there and doing some of the work, but in other areas like down in here, you've got to kind of open up everything all at once and do the do the work and then put it all back together again. 
um, which is where you can make some mistakes and so forth. So what I've done here is, as, as I mentioned before, I like to go through and, and have a working radio first. And then I go through and make uh, modifications, and then I keep checking as I go. I've done a number of them, though, that I had to go ahead and get out of the way uh, without having checked it. Um, I'm going to have an area of congestion that's going to be happening right in here. The power cord comes in down here. Uh, I need to go ahead and get this capacitor in. Um, this is the death capacitor. I'm going to be. It's just disconnected for right now. I've got a capacitor right here and a resistor down here that I need to change. And then this is where the power cord is going to come in, eventually tying onto here. And one of the things that I did was over here on the side is where the um, the electrolytic capacitor was clipped, and it had this this clip on it here for uh, holding the electrolytic. What I did was I drilled out the rivet that was holding that in place and now I've got a hole here that I'm going to use to mount a fuse. So what I've got here is a fuse holder and a CL90 thermistor. And the idea is I'm going to mount this probably right in here about like so. Now when I do that I'm going to basically be limiting my access that I'd like to have in this area in here. So what I'm doing is I'm to the point now uh, the next thing I'll be doing is chain the risk resistor and that, sorry, this resistor and this capacitor. Then I'm also going to put in the new electrolytics that I'm going to put right down on that point in there and then this point down in here. Before I do all that, I realize that I'm going to have a problem if I put the fuse in now. So what I'm going to do is do those first and then put the fuse in and then do the wiring that I'll talk about a little bit later. But before I go to all that extent, what I want to do is make sure that the work I've done to date is okay uh, because once I start doing stuff in here I don't want to be worrying if this is a problem or if the problem is out here so what I've done is I have done a lot of wiring of jumpering of things all over the place I've got the antenna back here in the back I've got the speaker hooked up over here the tuning condenser is out but I've got it hooked up and I'm just going to run this thing to see if this thing operates okay before I get into doing this last part of the wiring work so let's see how it does I'm getting noise from the speaker. It's just static, really. Okay, good. I'm getting some motor boating. I wonder if it's because the filt the uh, death capacitor didn't hooked up. I don't know. Sure sounds like a capacitor is not where it's supposed to be, isn't it? Here's the Y2 I'm going to use. Don't do this without an isolation capac uh, transformer. Let's see. Yeah, that might be what it is. So that's the common negative. We'll hook the other end to the chassis. Okay. So that capacitor being disconnected is definitely playing with us. So the audio circuit works. Modulation off. Okay, it's getting through. So the radio works. It's 
probably just this thing being placed outside of the chassis is keeping it from working right. I'm going to trust it's going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and proceed now with putting those uh, other capacitors in now. Okay, so I've done a lot of work, and it's been probably about a week. <laughs> uh, I've gone through and done the capacitor replacements that are in here. Let me get this out of the way. I've done the replacement capacitors uh, throughout here. Uh, here's the Y2 capacitor that goes from the chassis, uh, which is this pin right here on this tube socket that goes to the chassis, over to the common neutral. Okay, a common ground. Let me uh, run through what I did with the power. Uh, I've got a new power cord on here that has a polarized plug on it. it. Comes in, I put in a grommet. I have an underwriter's knot inside of here. The um, line or the hot comes up and goes to this fuse block which is installed here. What I did was I drilled out the rivet that held the clamp that held the big capacitor that used to be here. So I drilled that rivet out and that gave me a hole that then I used to mount the uh, fuse block on here. I've got about a 500 milliamp fuse in here right now. Uh, then when the line comes through the fuse, it then goes to a CL90 thermistor that will help drop down the, uh, the uh, voltage as it goes through it. When we're putting in about 120 volts AC going in, this is putting out about 115 volts, which is just what it's looking for. And then it goes here to this blue wire that then goes right back down here like it did before, ran along the bottom of the chassis, and now it comes up here and goes to the on off switch and then from here on the other side of the switch it then goes to the rectifier tube the neutral laid that comes in just comes in runs along the bottom and I've added this terminal strip here I've put a screw through one of these vent holes mounted a terminal strip here and now this is where the neutral ties in which is also the common negative uh, that's used for the system here's one of the new electrolytic capacitors uh, this one's the one that I believe was the green one, and then this was the red one here. It ties on this point, and both of these negatives come up and tie onto that common neutral point right here. And once again, there's the Y2 uh, safety capacitor. Okay, uh, as I put this thing back together again, um, and I saved you a lot of a lot of diagnosis of problems that I had. I had problems with the thing working. Uh, I had a number of issues. I I had to in here do a lot of things all at once. I had to kind of open this thing up and change a bunch of things and put it back together again. And I had the tuning condenser off and I wasn't able to really check things, uh, which is what I don't, I don't like to do, right? I got the radio working, but then I did a lot of work on it without checking as I went. So then when I got this all back together again, I turned it on and I just wasn't getting hardly anything. So one of them was I had this capacitor hooked up in the wrong place, which I've now corrected. Um, then the other thing I noticed was is that when I went onto the um, the lead that went from the uh, detector plate over to the uh, grid of the audio output tube, I was getting about five volts DC on here. Uh, I did a lot of checking to see if I'd done something else wrong in here. I couldn't really find anything. The other thing I found out was I wasn't getting the correct voltage out of the rectifier. So I tested the rectifier. It seemed to be okay. But I replaced it with another 35W4 and my voltage came back up a little bit. All right. <clears throat> then I replaced the 50C5. I did dig around through some of my trash radios I haven't done anything with yet, just kind of spare parts. Got a 50C5 output tube in here and that worked pretty good. Then I still had problems. I was having the right plate voltages on my, uh, on my converter and on my IF tube, but I was having very low voltage here on the uh, uh, Detector ABC First Audio. Um, basically what I ended up doing was changing this tube and then that, have a, that had a big impact. So I've changed that tube, I've changed that tube, and I've changed that tube. And now it seems to be working much better. I think some of these tubes are still weak. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it, it'll just take a while to warm up. Now the reception is not good. Uh, I think it just needs to be aligned. So I'll get around to do the alignment in, in, you know, in due course. I just kind of show you what we have, and it's uh, it's functioning fine right now. Uh, I haven't yet coated the speaker yet, and I need to work on the uh, some of the aesthetics. But I thought what I might do is maybe uh, go on and maybe look at doing some of the alignment to see if I can get this thing to perform a little better, and uh, we'll see how that goes.
Okay, so I'm going to turn on the IF frequency. So I'm going to pick it up. Okay, I'm picking it up there. Let me adjust my levels. Okay, I'm going to try to adjust the IF cans. I'll do the second one first. Into the turn. Okay, it's tight. Let me kind of get it to move. These don't want to turn very easily. Did you bring it? Okay, I think what happened is, is when I went to turn this first IF can down here, it was very tough to turn, and as I did, it died. So I think probably what happened was the slug was probably stuck inside the core, and when I turned it, it broke a lead. So I think I've damaged the first IF can. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm feeding the 455 directly via a capacitor down here. Uh, you see here into the output of the first IF here so they can go on through the, rec through the uh, IF uh, amplifier. So I'm going to go ahead and, and align this uh, IF can here and then I'm going to go back to here and see if I can see anything what I can do about this. I'm probably going to have to take it out and try to see if I can fix it. But meanwhile we can try to align this one. Okay, so we got the uh, that one aligned, and now probably let's see what we can do with the first one. I'm afraid I'm going to have to take it off. So now I'll go to the input of the first IF directly out of the uh, converter. Yeah, I'm going to have to take this can apart, unfortunately. It broke. Okay, got a lot of work to do. Okay, guys, well, we've gotten to the point where we did the initial diagnosis of this thing. We fixed it, got it working, uh, did the recapping. Then that led to needing to do a, uh, an alignment. Uh, we were able to align the second IF, but the first IF, it appears something in there broke. Uh, so... What we need to do now, unless we're just going to throw this in the trash, which I'm not going to do, we're going to uh, have to open up this IF transformer and see about reattaching that wire that probably got twisted and broken off. So I think the better thing to do is, is we'll make that a separate episode. This one's getting long enough. And so this was meant to be a quick repair, and you never know what's going to happen, you know. So uh, we're going to pick up the repair of this IF can in the next part. So until then, guys, appreciate you uh, stopping by and uh, taking a look. And uh, I'm not going to give up on this thing. We're just going to keep going. 
and uh, we'll get that fixed. We know this one can be aligned. We already got that one done, so we ought to be getting pretty close. But uh, that's going to take a little bit of work. So until then, appreciate you guys coming by and watching, and uh, appreciate all the kind comments. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.